longer, longer, longer drop, well, then you have that winky buck. Or the rap version of this would be, longer, longer, longer drop, then you got that winky buck, son. That's a little rap song for the heart, talking all about second degree type one AV block, AKA the winky buck, which is a disease of the electrical conduction system of the heart. When one or more, but not all, of the atrial impulses fail to conduct to the ventricles. It's kind of like a traffic jam at a toll booth. It's as if the cars are waiting in line, but each car basically kind of hesitates before crossing that threshold. Now it's just like first degree, but it's a tad bit worse because the P waves are getting further and further away from that QRS wave, that ventricular contraction. So what's really going on in the body? Well, as you guys know, the heart has one main pacemaker and two backup pacemakers. In this case, conduction originates in the SA node like normal, but the P wave takes longer and longer to get through that AV node than the one before. Guys, this is the biggest indicator of second degree type one, that late P wave. So longer, longer, longer drop, well, then you have that wink about. So using our five steps, let's interpret this EKG. Step one, the rate will be variable. Step two, the rhythm is gonna be irregular. That QRS is late. Not like regular first degree AV block where everything's evenly spaced out. Step three, the P wave will be present and upright, but late, huge indicator, guys. The PR interval will cycle because the PR gradually gets longer until that P wave drops or basically gets blocked. Lastly, the QRS will be normal and upright and even size, those three mini boxes. Now, what are the signs and symptoms? Well, just like all the other ugly cardiac dysrhythmias, the heart is not pumping correctly. So less cardiac output, meaning less oxygen, we'll see classic complaints like collapse, our cool little acronym to describe all the problems that low oxygen gives our patients. And yes, guys, we did spell it wrong on purpose. So one quick thing to remember, whether we have first degree all the way down to third degree is that signs and symptoms that we're gonna mention right now, they get a lot worse as we start marching toward third degree. Usually first degree, we don't see these signs and symptoms as apparent as third degree. So the C stands for chest pain from that low oxygen. O is for oxygen saturation that is lowered. L is for lethargy or fatigue. A is for an anxiety usually caused by lack of oxygen. P is from palpitations that described as a racing of the heart, kind of feels like gallatin of the chest. S is for shortness of breath or dyspnea, that difficulty breathing. Now guys, pay attention right here because this is where it differs a lot. Now E is from an even or extra slow heart rate, usually in third degree block. Now guys, third degree block, also called complete heart block, is known for having a bradycardic heart rate, usually less than 60 beats per minute, but sometimes less than 40 beats per minute. So guys, extra slow, then it's probably third degree heart block. Now guys, that's the biggest indication of the third degree block, that low, low heart rate. And finally guys, D stands for dizziness and syncope, which is also called fainting or passing out, and it's caused by low oxygen. Now guys, again, the symptoms will progressively get worse as the blocks progress. So first degree block usually has no signs or symptoms. Second degree block can have some symptoms, but guys, the majority of the symptoms that you see here above are in third degree block, the big complete heart block. So guys, write that down. Now, sometimes it may be asymptomatic or without symptoms, but again, that's very rare. So what are we gonna do about it? Now, guys, before we start memorizing all the nursing interventions and all those treatments, Always ask yourself, what is the main goal for the patient? In this case, we want to reset and restore that AV node to normal function. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove the causes, stop or decrease the dose that's slowing the heart rate. So guys, those beta blockers, those calcium channel blockers, and that digoxin, those negative chronotropic drugs that decrease the heart rate. Now, if that doesn't fix the problem, then we'll stimulate that AV node by giving it atropine to increase the heart rate, dopamine to increase the blood pressure, and then epinephrine to increase both the heart rate and BP by vasoconstricting or basically squeezing down those blood vessels, kind of like toothpaste, which increases cardiac output, which is basically that oxygen to the body, 
mainly to the vital organs like the heart and also the brain. Now, if that doesn't work, we're going to have to replace that AV node with a pacemaker, basically a little robot machine that keeps electrical impulses in the heart to take over the job that our body's node is failing to do. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys, see you next time.